She was the brightest star in Hollywood, dazzling the world with her beauty and charm. But behind the glamorous facade, she was a troubled soul, haunted by her past and tormented by her present. On a hot summer night in 1962, she took her last breath, alone in her bedroom with a bottle of pills and a phone by her side. The official verdict was suicide, but many doubted the truth. Who killed Marilyn Monroe? And what secrets did she take to her grave? In this video, we will take you on a journey into the dark and mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of Marilyn Monroe, one of the most iconic and enigmatic figures of the 20th century. Marilyn Monroe was born Norma Jean Mortensen in Los Angeles on June 1, 1926. Her mother was emotionally unstable and frequently confined to an asylum, so Norma Jean was reared by a succession of foster parents and in an orphanage. At the age of 16, she married a fellow worker in an aircraft factory, but they divorced a few years later. She took up modeling in 1944 and in 1946 signed a short-term contract with 20th Century Fox, taking as her screen name Marilyn Monroe. She began to attract attention as an actress in 1950 after appearing in minor roles in The, the Asphalt Jungle and All About Eve. Celebrated for her voluptuousness and wide-eyed charm, she won international fame for her sex symbol roles in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, How to Marry a Millionaire and There's No Business Like Show Business. The seven-year itch showcased her comedic talents and features the classic scene where she stands over a subway grating and has her white skirt billowed up by the wind from a passing train. In 1954, she married baseball great Joe DiMaggio, attracting further publicity, but they divorced eight months later. In 1955, she studied with Lee Strasberg at the Actors Studio in New York City and subsequently gave a strong performance as a hapless entertainer in Bus Stop. In 1956, she married playwright Arthur Miller. She made The Prince and the Showgirl, a critical and commercial failure, with Laurence Olivier in 1957, but in 1959 gave an acclaimed performance in the hit comedy Some Like It Hot. Her last role in The Misfits 1961 was directed by John Huston and written by Miller, whom she divorced just one week before the film's opening. By 1961, Monroe, beset by depression, was under the constant care of a psychiatrist. She had suffered from mental illness and substance abuse for years, and she had not completed a film since The Misfits, which was a box office disappointment. Monroe had spent 1961 preoccupied with her various health problems, and in April 1962 had begun filming Something's Got to Give for 20th Century Fox, but the studio fired her in early June. Fox publicly blamed Monroe for the production's problems, and in the weeks preceding her death she had attempted to repair her public image by giving several interviews to high-profile publications. She also began negotiations with Fox on being rehired for Something's Got to Give, and for starring roles in other productions. Monroe spent the last day of her life, August 4, 1962, at her home in Brentwood. She was accompanied at various times by publicist Patricia Newcomb, housekeeper Eunice Murray, photographer Lawrence Schiller, and psychiatrist Ralph Greenson. At Greenson's request, Murray stayed overnight to keep Monroe company. At approximately 3 a.m. on Sunday, August 5th, Murray noticed that Monroe had locked herself in her bedroom and appeared unresponsive when she looked inside through a window. Murray alerted Greenson, who arrived soon after, entered the room by breaking a window, and found Monroe dead. Her death was officially ruled a probable suicide by the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office, based on information about her overdosing and being prone to mood swings and suicidal ideation. No evidence of foul play was found an accidental overdose was ruled out because of the large amount of barbiturates she had ingested, but not everyone was convinced by the official verdict. Some of Monroe's friends, colleagues and fans suspected that there was more to the story than a simple suicide. They pointed out inconsistencies and contradictions in the evidence, the testimonies and the investigation. They wondered why there was a bruise on her arm, why the phone was in her hand, why there were no water glasses in the room, why the autopsy report was incomplete, why the police arrived late, why the press was notified before her family, and why some of her personal belongings were missing. Some of the most popular conspiracy theories suggest that Monroe was murdered by someone who wanted to silence her or use her death for their own agenda. Some of the alleged suspects include US President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert F. Kennedy, 
with whom Monroe was rumored to have had affairs. Union leader Jimmy Hoffa, who was at odds with the Kennedys. Mob boss Sam Giancana, who had ties to both Hoffa and the CIA. And Monroe's ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio, who was still in love with her and jealous of her relationships. Some of these theories claim that Monroe was killed by a lethal injection, a poisoned enema, or a staged overdose, and that her death was covered up by corrupt officials, agents, or doctors. Of course, these theories are not universally accepted, and many experts and historians have debunked them or challenged their plausibility. They argue that there is no conclusive evidence or credible witnesses to support the murder claims, and that the inconsistencies and contradictions can be explained by human error, miscommunication, or speculation. They also point out that Monroe had a history of depression and suicide attempts, and that she was under a lot of stress and pressure at the time of her death. They suggest that Monroe's death was a tragic, but not a mysterious outcome of her troubled life. But despite the lack of proof, the murder theories have persisted and proliferated over the years, spawning countless books, documentaries, films, and podcasts. They have also influenced the public perception and the cultural legacy of Monroe, who has become a symbol of glamour, tragedy, and mystery. They have fueled the fascination and the speculation about her life and her death, and have raised questions about the role of power, fame, and media in shaping the narrative of history. Why does Marilyn Monroe's death remain shrouded in mystery even 61 years later? Perhaps because it reflects the complexity and the ambiguity of her life, which was full of contradictions and paradoxes. She was a star who wanted to be an actress, a sex symbol who wanted to be loved, a woman who wanted to be free. She was admired and desired by millions, but she felt lonely and insecure. She was a victim of abuse and exploitation, but she also fought for her rights and dignity. She was a product of her time, but she also transcended it. She was, in short, a human being who had dreams, hopes, fears, and flaws. And perhaps that is why we are still drawn to her story and why we still wonder about her death. Because we can relate to her and because we want to understand her. Because we see ourselves in her and because we want to honor her. Because she was Marilyn Monroe and because she was more than that. She was a mystery and she was a legend. And she lives on in our hearts and minds.